Hello and welcome back to another guide for Lamplighters League. My name is Saiken and today we're going to continue our agent guides. Next up is Celestine, uh, the stress breaker. If anyone ever stresses you out, Celestine is the master in doing so. So let's do, as always, uh, a skill review of her chassis, then a couple of equipment, and then a couple of undrawn hand reviews, plus some gameplay footage. I will say, as full disclosure, Celestine is one of the agents that actually needs a couple of undrawn hand cards in order to perform better, and a couple of equipment items in order to do better. Right off the bat, she is okay as an agent, but very... Uh, volatile I should say she becomes way better with the right equipment and if you stick around I'll tell you all you need to know so let's take a look at her abilities so cruel release as a passive ability will deal extra stress damage upon landing a critical hit that in itself is good but the better part is if she uh, finishes someone with a stress finisher she regains her signature ability and her signature ability is no joke or pushover we're looking at mesmerize mesmerize very very strong ability <clears throat> gains a full enemy for a round on the upgraded version for even two rounds. There are a couple of ways of how you can make sure that Mesmerize even doesn't cost an AP. We're going to go into that as well in a second. So, core of her uh, chassis is, for starters, her base ability, Curse. Curse is a very strong ability, but unfortunately also has a very strong cooldown or very high cooldown of three to four rounds as a base. It deals one stress uh, damage to an enemy and any further attack that the enemy receives will receive an additional stress. Mind you, it is attack that they receive and not hit that they receive. So multi attackers like, for instance, Anna Sophie or Eddie with two attacks uh, each already push it up and ultra multi attackers like Isaac with up to seven attacks per AP will push the stress through the roof. It only lasts one round, but it is a phenomenal way of uh, really driving up the stress. So the second core ability to her kit is called Gambit, which comes in three forms, so called Gambit 1, uh, 2 and 3. On 1, you once per round have the option to either gain an AP or gain 3 stress. 2 allows you to do it twice and 3 allows you to do it three uh, as, as often as you want. So you're only limited by the potential stress that you gain from a cult Gambit. So that allows her by herself to already gain a few um, extra AP, but she generates stress. So now we need to find out how can she reduce stress. So for starters, when you are landing a critical hit, you are reducing um, stress. There are other things though of how she can uh, further reduce her stress, most noticeably Dark Delight. She has a 50% chance uh, to heal one stress whenever she debuffs someone. So point being, if she has a huge debuff capability, then there is a huge ability to uh, every time uh, reduce stress. The second uh, option to reduce stress is Satisfaction, where whenever she attacks a poisoned enemy, she heals one stress as well. So now naturally you ask yourself, how can we uh, even poison enemies? Uh, that is where her third ability in the kit comes into play, which is Whispering Knife, ranged ability, one of her few ranged abilities besides the normal curse, uh, to make an enemy poisoned on the Whispering Knife too. It's not only poison, but also deals additional damage per point of stress. Mind you, that's not um, she only dealing additional points of damage, but generally uh, target receiving additional damage for any point of stress on it. So the core gameplay mechanic of her later, without anything additionally, is she's essentially going to use a cold gambit twice, maybe, once she gains an AP, once she gains three stress, then she's going to curse a target, um, spending that gained AP, um, creating stress there, and essentially now generating stress for any further attack. Then she's whispering knifing uh, that target, another debuff, um, that uh, will then also uh, allow her to deal more damage on the target. So that's two out of three um, action points spent. And then she would continue to attack it, uh, healing stress herself and healing herself with Umbral Edge. And on top of uh, that, 
each of uh, the curses um, the or each of the debuffs the curse and the whispering knife both have a chance to reduce stress so since that's 50 percent and in that example she has used two um, debuffs she would on average gain one stress reduction another stress reduction from attacking a poisoned enemy so she's almost at zero uh, stress where she started and then you kind of rinse and repeat there are a couple of advanced ways of playing her and that really um, is where more um, cooldown reduction and additional equipment comes into play so let's go to equipment that she needs in order to become better because currently that sounds like a very nice little routine to um, deal with one enemy but um, Celestine actually can much more efficiently deal with more enemies at once so how does she do Moving on to Celestine's equipment. So for starters, let's look at the consumables. I would highly recommend when playing her to focus fully on the stress break meta. The stress flask one um, or the stress flask two are perfect items to uh, supplement uh, her kit. Uh, the stress flask two inflicts four stress in a um, kind of uh, small-ish AOE, but you can still hit two to three characters with it really nicely upping uh, that game. Additionally, the Stress Remedy is potentially even more important. Uh, stress Remedy 1 heals 3, Stress Remedy 2 heals 5 stress, which will allow her to continue more often with her uh, occult gambit shenanigans. So she is one of the characters that actually has relatively dedicated consumables that will make her better. In terms of equipment, the by far most important equipment is the Veriditas um, amulet because it makes her from a good character, it uh, con completely creates her to be a great character. There are a couple of reasons why that is the case. So with the Veridius amulet, um, upon receiving a heal, the agent gains one AP. And Celestine herself uh, does have the option to mesmerize and with uh, the, um, the uh, with the skills uh, from Mother Amina, any signature ability heals 30 hit points. That will very much trigger Celestine's amulet. So all of a sudden she regains one AP that she spends for Mesmerize up to twice a round. And that makes it very, very, very potent. So all of a sudden Celestine can Mesmerize someone and you can very much include the mesmer uh, mesmerizing into her normal routine. So the routine that I described beforehand where you call gambit then double uh, debuff and uh, then attack in order to kind of reduce the stress all of a sudden uh, becomes uh, way more potent because you mesmerize for two rounds a, a target for two rounds um, in terms of uh, the vitality gear uh, in terms of the uh, armor you would want to have vitality gear two or three just to increase the max stress and the hit points so that's really all she needs in terms of uh, her actual weapon I've tried quite a few different things. You could go with a weapon mod that inflicts poison on hit, therefore um, basically bypassing the need in order to um, yeah, poison someone with a ranged poisoning and uh, just hitting uh, the, tar uh, the target outright. And mind you, um, if you poison someone and hit them, Umbral uh, Blade uh, also heals you for 30 hit points. That again triggers the Talisman. So keep in mind you are very likely going to trigger Viridius um, uh, Amulet twice. So there is a very strong combination with Nicastro's Talisman where you're essentially poisoning an enemy in melee and then continuing to um, leech uh, action points off of it as well as health off of it while dealing damage. And whilst that is a cool combination and a nice one, there are better combinations. So um, you will see in a second why I'm using the Skirmish Talisman, which really is additional speed, weapon damage and crit chance. So that's all around good just in order to deal damage and be quicker. Um, and the reason why that is because I want to play Celestine really as someone who in, uh, inflicts as much morale or stress damage as possible. And that's where we come to the undrawn hand. The by far most important card for her is the Monument. A debuff ability that on a level five inflicts three stress damage on surrounding enemies. With an AOE of seven, it is a massive cone and only uh, or massive AOE point blank. So 
she just stands in the middle and can easily hit up to 10 targets with that for three stress damage cooldown three keep that in mind because that's going to be important as the monument itself just deals a baseline of three stress damage uh, combine it with a tyrant where um, on a high level you do have plus five max um, stress and whenever the agent is attacked enemies suffer plus one stress so making her very very uh, unlikely to continuing uh, continuously being attacked and then combine that um, in an optimal case if you uh, if you want to reduce uh, the cooldown with the sage where scoring a critical hit reduces his cooldowns by themselves now i am um, not able to put the sage on every single character that is cooldown relying just because it's such a great card so in this case what i did is i gave her another debuff ability where the enemy takes 50 percent more damage the wave absolutely fantastic uh, card later you can see that uh, it just reduces the cooldown uh, even more but in terms of cooldown reduction really what i am doing instead is i'm using celestine together with uh, anna sophia uh, and anna sophia herself can use the blast ability to completely reset the cooldown so how does that look in reality? Well, an endgame Celestine in reality with that setup that I'm running basically starts by um, using Occult Gambit maybe three, four times to kind of get um, uh, two ability uh, points or action points back. Then uh, she is going to um, very nicely move wherever she wants with her high speed and attack a target to stand really in the middle of the pack. Um, then she's going to use the monument uh, ability uh, uh, creating a massive stress on um, on everyone um, mind you potentially the better way of doing it is you start with a curse then move to the target uh, because that already um, uh, creates two stress on that target then you are using the monument uh, to give everybody a massive stress then either you're using a flask in order to uh, stress uh, break them or you're getting your cooldowns uh, reset uh, by Anna Sophie, and you're just going to use uh, the monument again, very handily breaking at least three or four characters. Then you still have uh, one or two uh, ability points left over. Really how it then works is you're mesmerizing a target that is um, currently annoying you the most and that is not stress broken you immediately gain the action point back then you are stress finishing one of the targets that you have broken uh, gain mesmerize uh, back reuse mesmerize in order to uh, basically mesmerize the second target kill the next uh, uh, target with a stress break and at the end of that kind of cycle of uh, activities curse into moving there into monument into cooldown reset into monument again and then double mesmerize you either uh, continue to attack one of the uh, the targets to uh, stress break them further um, or you're going to use your curse again in order to uh, preempt uh, the next target uh, for stress break or you use evasion in order to just be safe be it as it may however you're playing it the net outcome is you kill two targets with uh, stress you uh, infused a lot of stress on all of the other targets getting them absolutely ready for next round to be uh, ripe for reaping and you successfully charmed two enemies that are now fighting on your side so you killed four uh, prepared everybody else and that was just one turn of course if you're using um, your occult gambit more often uh, so that you uh, acquire more stress then there is even more than you uh, that you could do you could uh, for instance uh, with that uh, poison an, uh, an enemy and then continue to go to town um, with uh, your melee attack with uh, the talisman you get up to two melee attacks for free so say in the following round uh, your um, uh, your poison uh, cursing another enemy go there attack twice for free and uh, then uh, stress finish yet another enemy so the um, possibilities are endless but the core uh, concept of her and her abilities is really having the right cards monument in particular um, or the right consumables in this case uh, stress flasks 
then using the talisman in order to get a couple of free abilities around healing and then using all of that combined in order to stress break enemies. Sounds complicated, let's take a look how it really plays out in a scenario. All right, we join Celestine and her friends in an exemplary fight. Aggroed 10 enemies whilst we were sneaking to get to that station. Celestine is in the middle of the fray, but that is a position that she's all too familiar with. So when we are playing with her, we want to use the occult gambit at the beginning just to get a couple of AP. I already started doing that and we want even a bit more. Don't be afraid of uh, the stress because there are plenty of mechanics to remove it. Let's go up to 9 stress at max for now. And you can see that one of her uh, trademark abilities is just getting all of those sweet, sweet um, action points with a cold gambit. This is a great illustration of why she is an absolute powerhouse. Uh, even with that 50-50 chance. All right, so we're at uh, a, a respectable amount of stress, but not overstressed it. We're then following up by the monument, and you can see just how much stress she is dealing. But we're not doing that before we are not using um, our curse to begin with. We're using that on a target that can easily stress break, say, for instance, uh, this sniper back here. And when we're then using the monument, as a consequence, uh, that guy is already up to four stress. You can see uh, she herself uh, reduces a massive amount of stress just by hitting all of uh, the targets nicely. And with the exception of uh, that melee uh, uh, flamer, we're actually doing very well. All right, with all of the stress lost, how about we're continuing to just gain a couple more AP? Let the cards fall as they Didn't work out, but we could have easily gotten more. So we do have a couple of options by herself uh, if we wanted uh, to do that. For instance, we could uh, start getting this guy here slowly but surely down but I would instead uh, opt for a more team focused approach. For starters, we're going to mesmerize the one person that could uh, become a problem that heals us. And since uh, we got the Viridius um, amulet, we're getting that AP back. So we're still sitting uh, nicely at six AP. We're using another character in order to uh, hit and stress break uh, this uh, one agent here as you can uh, that one enemy here as you can see it's not the amount of uh, hits um, of hits that you're taking it's the amount of attacks that you're doing so celestine is in the great position of now uh, stress breaking said uh, enemy and with that another signature charge is available so she could very nicely mesmerize uh, someone else we're not going to immediately do that. Instead, what I would want to do is uh, get our cooldowns back. And the way that we're uh, going about it is we're putting a nice little poison onto uh, one of uh, the enemies. We're not 100% sure which one is the, uh, the right one for now. One way of uh, solving that problem, however, is by simply removing as many of uh, the uh, enemies as possible and we're flushing out uh, the right uh, one. So all um, of that is just a setup for what we're going to do next. Uh, Celestine is now going to move into a position where she is close to her teammates. She uh, begins uh, to uh, sit there in order to get a Bless ability. Bless uh, will refresh her cooldowns and that gives Celestine a nice little opportunity to do a couple of things here. For starters, we're going to uh, use another curse uh, to get this guy going. Followed up by another stress break right there stress break happened the old girl's really starting to sing celestine 
is going to mesmerize the one person that hasn't really taken any stress or the one enemy right there the talisman triggers for the second time giving her the viridius amulet giving her an ap back and we're just going to use this here as a reposition um, please take note how i use uh, the uh, stress breaks as reposition options because once we're repositioned we do have everyone in our proximity and yet more stress is happening to each and every one of them another three on top of what they have had before bringing them nicely to the brink of uh, stress break all we need to do uh, with uh, celestine now is to continue our occult gambit as you can see we're getting more ap's off of her there we go that's plenty for now and what I would want to do is uh, to effectively start stress breaking uh, the remainder. Every hit counts uh, very nicely into uh, a stre uh, stressor. So we can, with uh, Coup de Gras, uh, finish these guys. And although the mesmerization isn't giving you uh, the AP back, there is still no reason not to just get another Thrall. Uh, and recharge the ability by simply killing off uh, that guy. We're rinsing and repeating. This time we're moving over here. There's yet another stress break, which brings us nicely to... Another mesmerization. Mind you, at this point we have four thralls and we are not done yet. I could uh, be going, I could continue to uh, call Gambit if I uh, wanted, um, but I want to keep the stress at a reasonable rate. We're going to stress break this guy uh, proactively for next uh, round. Uh, we just got a AP back. Well, it seems to be one of uh, those days when you are cleaning the entire uh, stage with uh, basically nothing left. So all we have is one enemy, uh, enemy left. And Celestine basically has killed nine enemies by herself. If this isn't a great display of how stress break can uh, make your uh, game easier, then I don't know what is. Let me know in the comments down below if you like the build, um, if you are uh, convinced about it, uh, what you like most, what can I improve, is there anything that I have missed? See you in one of our other guides. I have plenty of them for Lamplighters League and I hope uh, you enjoy them just as much as you enjoy this one. Take care and bye-bye.